the 10 most the 10 most questions that is asked about jobs in Qatar. In this video, we are Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Max from Max Creation. In today's video, we are going to look at the 10 most questions that are being asked about jobs in Qatar. I know most of you, you try to place in the questions in the comment section and at least I'll try to get back to you as soon as I get that comment. But in today's video, let us try to see what are these questions, what are the feedback or what do you expect when you ask this question and generally, what would you expect when you come to Qatar? One, what is the salary? in Qatar, salary of security guards, salary of cleaners, salary of technicians, salary of domestic workers. In this video, this looks like a very general question, but I'm just going to break it according to the Qatar labor law. What does the labor law say about salary in Qatar? For example, if you're a cleaner, you're a security guard, you're a domestic worker, you're a technician. The basic salary in Qatar is 1,000 Qataria. Food allowance is 300. Housing allowance is 500 Qataria. But this can be divided into three scenarios. If you're a cleaner, if you're a security guard, you're a technician, you're a domestic worker, the startup salary that is being gazetted by the government, according to the labor law, is 1,000 uh, for eight hours and 300 for food allowance and 500 if your company does not give you accommodation but normally most of the companies here in Qatar they give what you call accommodation so you expect that your basic salary for eight hours that is according to the labor law that was gazetted in march 2021 is 1300 for eight hours and in that case also if your company gives you food that means that for eight basic hours for the salary for basic hours you are going to be receiving 1000 for the overtime it will depend on individual companies and it will definitely depend on what we call the contracts per that company that it has with the client if there are some companies that had contracts with clients that are for 12 hours so meaning that on top of the eight hours the extra or four hours that you work will be calculated as overtime that is what we call uh, the salary salary scale in Qatar for unskilled jobs the startup salary according to the labor law for other salary it would some some sometime it will depend on uh, the individual companies for example when they're recruiting you there will definitely some companies may look at your experience then they will add a token to what you're supposed to get but the basic salary is 1300 300 uh, 1300 Qatar real 300 for food allowance and basically and the other 1000 it is for eight hours duty for the 500 it is for those companies that will not provide their employees with housing allowance you will be entitled to that then uh, question number two freelancer visa in Qatar can I get a job yes if you have a freelancer visa you can get a job in Qatar but something that I need to let you know or something that you need to be aware about the freelancer visa. Who is that holder of the freelancer visa? Remember, for you to receive a visa in Qatar, it is supposed to be a national or what you call a local here. It is a citizen. For example, a Qatar is the one that is responsible for giving that visa. So you find that that freelancer visa, you may find in between there, there is what you call a blocker one, blocker two, blocker three, blocker four. So meaning that if you are looking for this freelancer visa, if you've not got it directly from the citizen who is a Qatari, uh, then you will be getting it from what you call blockers. And those blockers also, they will be getting what you call commission. But if you have it, you can get the job. It's no problem. If you are coming from outside Qatar, you must be also be very careful before you apply for the freelancer visa because it may be very tricky for you in case if it is your first time to come to the country remember everything will be bought by you housing accommodation everything Qatar ID payment uh, blocker payment it will be by you and still even if when you are inside the country you know you have to pay your bills yourself you will have to pay for your Qatar ID 
that is an extra cost you need to pay. Then still also you need to know that these freelancer visas are in two different types or for people free visa you can say in two different forms that those for what you call uh, professionals and that those for what you call unskilled job not every freelancer visa that will get will give you what you call a professional job for example you will not have a freelancer visa uh, for unprofessional jobs and you think you're going to apply as an, Indian, an engineer you've never gone to engineering and you don't have a, 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 something that shows you an engineer or uh, certificates are uh, being assertated by the government to show you an engineer. So it will be a waste of time. So meaning that each, each visa has this kind of job that will be applicable for that. For the qualified professional, it will be a different free visa. And for these other jobs, it will be another free visa. But remember, I keep on telling you, if you get a freelancer visa here in Qatar and it does not give you 3,000 Qatar real as salary, you better be very careful. Life is going to be very hard for you. In case you have it, but still also you need to be aware, you need to definitely be aware where you are getting that visa because it's very quite important. You need to be very, 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 very careful. We we'll look at question three. Can I come to Qatar with a visa visa? Yes. And normally that is a question is also asked, but remember in Qatar something like around visa visa. It's quite something that is a little bit very tricky if you are coming to this country. Especially if you're coming, to, uh, you're coming as a family visit, it's okay. It's really very cheap. But visit visa in Qatar is a bit very expensive. Not like any other Gulf countries. Like people would wish to go to Bahrain, you go to Bahrain. And you know you go to Bahrain, you go to Dubai. And just recently I'll tell you what happened in Dubai where people were being carried out and deported. So I think uh, after also the situation is going to be changed. For you to have a visa here, you'll have what you call an insurance. You'll have to first book an insurance for you before you come. It's called an emergency insurance. Then you also need to book a hotel for the time you're going to stay here. Then it will also depend on other requirements that may be given to you or an approval for you to come into the country. Then still, something that we need to, uh, to understand, maybe there are some other countries that have a waiver, visa, a visa waiver on arrival, but still, those requirements are applicable for them. But once you have it, let's say, for example, you're on a family visa, your family is here and they invited you for what you call a family visa and you happen to get a job, yes, you will get that job, you will exit the country, they will give, send you that visa, then you will re-enter the country. So long as you go out of the, 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 what you call the immigration, you probably, you will know definitely that you get a job for that case. Then, something, uh, another question is, what are the available unskilled jobs in Qatar? Yes, but the unskilled jobs are very many. There are a lot of jobs that you can do in Qatar once you get that opportunity that do not require a lot of skills or do not require a lot of education for you. For example, you can come as a security, yes. You can come as a cleaner, yes. For the startup jobs, you can come as a domestic worker, you can come as landscaping, you can come as a, uh, you can come as a technician so long as you have what you call the technical skills and you have some Gulf experience. It is, those are the startup jobs that we think you can come in the country and do. Because remember, Qatar has not been so much strict yet with what you call academic documents, that you need to possess this, you need to possess this. So long as you can speak and write, so long as you can communicate well, you either speak Arabic or you speak English or you can even write, it's how probably you can communicate is what has been very, very important and it is only the point that has been taken up and it has still been taken away in one way or the other to have it in that way. So probably you are sure that you will get the job as you get for those startup jobs. And remember, we are talking about these startup jobs. Yes, these startup jobs have some good amount of money that you can get and which is pretty very good for you to start up. Then another question is that what is the probation period of domestic workers in Qatar? Yes, we talk about that question is um, question number five. What is the probation period of domestic workers in Qatar? But likewise, something that you need to understand is that like any other Gulf countries, domestic workers, these are dealing directly with the families or working uh, uh, inside families or closely to the families of the citizens uh, or even people. So normally, they are kind of... Uh, arrangement is certainly very different. Yes, we look at the salary, the basic salary that is being gazetted by the government, it is 
it applies to all people in Qatar or it applies to all citizens in Qatar. But when you look at the probation period of domestic workers, for example, we look at nannies, we look at house helpers, we look at uh, uh, house drivers, uh, those ones, we look at them, their, their probation period is nine months. Unless, unlike these other, prof, other, other jobs outside, your, domestic, your, your probation period is six months. But for domestic workers working closely to those families or working inside those houses or those families, you expect your probation period to be nine months. And remember, there are a lot of regulations and a lot of clauses against that uh, laws for the domestic worker. For example, you, you never have to exit to go back to your agent unless you consign and you finish up your nine months probation. Otherwise, if you don't finish it up, then your employer has a right to reclaim back the money and uh, which is uh, partially it is given in that uh, in that in that level so just know that the domestic the probation period of a domestic worker is nine months and something still i have to let you about know about what you call the domestic workers is that it is always very hard for you to change from that one world it's always very hard for you to change from that one visa of domestic worker to another job unless you've gotten what you call an approval or an noc otherwise apart from that if you don't have a no objection certificate or you do not have an noc to change to another job when you are within the country then probably you only have to exit out of the country get a fresh visa which is not in a domestic work as your profession then you can move on and do something else that is probably what is that then another question can i change jobs in qatar after my contract yes you can change you know you cannot change it is a two-way it is a two-way question for example you can change if you finish the contract with your company depending on what kind of contract you signed with that company it is maybe either a limited two years or unlimited depending on what you completed you sign with your company that's why normally i keep on telling people you should be very careful with the contract that you sign you should be very careful with the clauses of the contract you should be very careful to read what you call the clauses of the contracts in those when you're signing because it will either tag you it will either stretch you or it will either allow you to change and sometimes i need to you need to understand but that some jobs where they have what you call a non-competing clause i keep on taking or talking about what you call the non-competing clause whereby for example you are coming from security you cannot change to go to another security company because these are same business doing the same line of a uh, same line of work for example people are doing security it's a little bit very tight here in Qatar, very big very tight if you want to move from security to another security you may be rejected by the Minister of Labor for that cause because of what you call the competing clause which is being stated clearly in the what you call the labor law you never have to move to another competing clause unless you've given you've been given what you call a no objection certificate in that way so you find that one that is also very important in some other company they may refuse to change depending on what is was being agreed upon in the contract that's why most of the time take the contract that you get to sign very important and get to understand each single clause of word in that contract that is being written because it is what is going to save you it's what is going to, is going to tie you in one way or the other but once you finish your contract and you really want to change or you have another or you have a job offer from another company yes you can resign to your former employer you can resign depending on how long you've been in that company for example if you've been in the company for five years you need to give two months notice and if you've been to the company uh, for, for you've been in the company for two uh two two to five years then you need to give two months notice and if you've been in that company for one year then probably give you one month notice then if all goes well then you can change and go to another job after you get a job offer and re resigning but make sure you re you complete you complete all the period or your the 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 notice period you complete with your former employer such that you can move and change amicably then something that can my employer terminate my my contract during the probation period that is another question uh, uh, that is question that's question seven yes four so yes true your employer can terminate you uh, can terminate you uh, during what you call your probation period. Yes, there are two grounds where it can terminate you. For example, if you are medically fit, you are medically unfit, 
thing that employer has to terminate because uh, for, for you to work here in Qatar, for you to get to uh, work, work, get what we call a residence permit, you must be medically fit. You must prove that you are uh, fit to live in the community and you are fit. You are not a prone to diseases to the community and you can, you are eligible or you are fit to do that particular job. So once you are unmedically fit or you fail the medicals, then probably no option. Your employer has to report you back to your country of origin. Then something that you need to understand, if you feel you are not, if the, your employer feels you are not productive enough as he expected. Like for example, sometimes we get to hike up, we get to lie what kind of skills we have and what product activity we can add. If your employer sees that you cannot add anything to his company, your, your productivity is not that good to what he expected, he has a right to take you back to your country in one way or the other. Then something also you need to understand when you breach the contract, when you tend to, they tend to breach the contract, for example, if you run away from your employer before even you complete the information period for the first time, then probably uh, if you complete that one for the first time and you don't, then probably he has to take you off and uh, it, it will be he has a right to take you back to your country then something then uh, another question is what happens if i'm medically unfit is also another question that is me ask yes if you are medically unfit then what means your employer has no choice uh, if you're medically unfit, you have some diseases, you will not be able to get what you call a residence permit because you 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 are pro you are pro uh, you are you pro you you look unfit for to be in the community. So what the, your employer has to do, he has to return you back to your country of origin. That means you cannot be given employment because for here in Qatar, it's something that I need to let you here in Qatar is that for example, for you to work here in Qatar, you need to have what you call a residence permit, and that residence permit will. Be just know that you are a citizen here, you are a resident here, and you are eligible to work in the country. Then question number nine, how long is an employer allowed to keep my passport? Yes, as an employer is allowed to keep your passport, at least for the first six months, it's quite understandable because that is what you call the probation period. And in those six, six months, you, you have to do what you call medicals, you have to do fingerprints, you have until you get what you call your residence permit and once you get your residence permit like this because the work of your passport by your employer is already completed you have your residence permit then you have the right to claim back your passport and keep it yourself in none or the other that is what i will tell you people that after you get your residence permit then you have the right to lay claim your passport from your employer don't allow your employer to keep the passport but in some situation there are some companies like cleaning companies there are some companies where by you prove you do not have safety you feel unsafe to keep your passport with you in your luggage or in your, your accommodation then there are some people that have kept it with their office in the one way or the other but all that one is also something is also depends on what you call the personal initiative and the personal decision without being forced in one way or the other but if your employer is forcing to keep your passport without your permission it is proper totally or prohibited or totally is not allowed in one way or the other yes then the last question is uh, what is the best way to come to Qatar for jobs yes why uh, I keep on telling people we have uh, different forms of your coming to Qatar for example I just give one you can apply for the jobs on our website we have um, uh, I put a video that is what I was talking about uh, the jobs how you can apply for the jobs you can check one of the video in the description link then you can apply on the website apart from not applying on the website you can also uh, being the job by getting from through what you call recommenders in one way where his personal resident living in Qatar can recommend you if he has an available opportunity or if he sees an available opportunity being advertised and is given chance to recommend you, he can recommend someone to come in one way or the other. Then something also you need to 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 understand is that another one is using what's most for example most of the most prominent thing that uh, where people come here is what you call you can you can use in what you call uh, recruitment or manpower agencies uh, you get you pay a little bit, bit of some money of what you call commission but you are sure you will get the job when you get the job here you'll probably be able 
to pay back or even to get back the money that you use for commission. Then something also, some people come on what you call family visas, they come, they've been sponsored by other families, they come inside and after uh, they get jobs, they will exit and once after they will exit one or the other, they can come back and start doing that job, that uh, this visa will be converted to a work visa, then they come back into the country, then they start a job. I think that is what normally happens and that is exactly what you should know. So most of these questions are frequently asked and uh, uh, much as in the videos we'll try to give all the prone answers but I think I've tried, at least I've tried to give you a recap of what you expect in case this is to happen or what you expect for this kind of question. Thank you so much for coming back to this channel. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to share. And remember, you can also go to the latest updates. You can follow my Instagram at makesamuel20. Uh, you can also look at the TikTok, uh, TikTok account at makescreation where we have the latest updates around Qatar and the club. Then you can also look at my other um, uh, channel which is Malcolm Makes. It's all about travel. We look at different parts of Qatar. We look at different parts uh, the travel areas then also don't forget to subscribe to these channels and don't forget to click and press the notification bell it's always makes from the next question see you again in the next video don't forget to like and share